So something I don't do very often is work on Worcester Bosch boilers, but here we are. So uh, interesting history to the job. So this boiler was put in um, November uh, 24, so around about five or six months ago. And the uh, it's a completely plumbed. There was warm air here before, uh, completely replumbed, but they had some electrically heated towel rails and those were then coupled into the system. And unfortunately, they must have been really badly contaminated and that contamination has been introduced to the brand new system. And as a result, it completely clogged up the first heat exchanger. And I'm not sure of the exact history there, whether it got cleaned um, after that heat exchanger, but either way, cleaned or not cleaned, uh, they got through a second heat exchanger. And this is now uh, on the third heat exchanger. When this one got installed, the customer just left it switched off and has asked me to come and uh, apply the plate separation here. So we've plate separated it. Bear in mind that the system has been uh, flushed twice. It's power flushed once, mains flushed once. We've done a complete drain down on this job as well. So emptied everything out, refilled it. It's still dirty. It's not filthy, but it's dirty. You wouldn't pass any tests. Um, so we've got plate separation in here. So basically we've taken off now that because it's a Worcester it's not a four pipe boiler it's a little bit more complicated to do than the Wiesman and um, always think Wiesman is the most easy boiler to work on so what we've done here is we've used the central heating valve into the plate heat exchanger and because we wanted a hot water priority system we've just come straight through the boiler through the hot water valve and these were valves were existing that goes off through a cylinder I'm not sure why they've used a horizontal cylinder when they could have used a uh, vertical one but anyway they've chosen to use the horizontal one 300 litre cylinder here I think um, that returns back so down here I've cut out the old return oops cut out the old return from the heating system and I've used the expansion vessel connection point here um, to fit the filters on so we've got the Magnolique style piece of stuff that doesn't work and then we've got a strainer here and got the pump on the return then the filling loop coming up into the return side of our plate heat exchanger pressure relief valve up there um, and that's controlled by that valve now we've done using a relay here we've done hot water priority so what happens when you get a call for hot water that hot water call operates the relay and it drops the signal from the central heating so if the central heating is on at the same time the central heating valve will close and the pump will switch off the hot water valve will open and the water will go around the hot water when the hot water is satisfied this will switch off de-energize the relay uh, reopening the central heating one if there's a signal for central heating and bringing it around so um, that's it so quite an interesting little job we've done uh, um, some tests on it as well we're getting really good delta t i've got really low delta t across the boiler flow and return um, so the pump's obviously running too fast across there and we've got at full load we're getting around delta t 19 across the plate but it is a hot day outside so well, it's a hot day and we've got the boiler running at 100 percent on a test program so um can't really govern by that for what the delta t should be but we're getting delta t 19 all the same so we know we're sort of somewhere in the right ballpark with that side, but really low delta T on the primary side um, on there. But because this is a high temperature system, I don't see any point in mussing around with it. So it's never going to condense. It's never going to be running particularly efficient, sufficiently. Um, it's, it's not two temperatures. Uh, so it's going to be set running around 70, somewhere between 70 and 80, so it can produce the hot water, which means when the heating's on, it's still not going to be running effectively, sorry, efficiently. And... Uh, Got the, I think it's a hive control on here. So anyway, I thought it's quite an interesting little project. Anyway, it's the end of new heat exchangers. The heat exchanger in there now will remain pristine for the whole life of the boiler, and it'll probably prolong the life of that boiler quite considerably. Um, so yeah, another another little thing we picked up on here was the people with expansion vessels not setting the pressures. This had been left at the out of the box pressure of 1.5 we've dropped the pressure down to 0.75 um, and uh, in line with the 
the, sort of around the range of normal uh, internal boiler expansion vessel precharges. And we've got the system topped up to 1.5 here. So at 1.5, so we should have half the volume of this cylinder in backup water. So I think that's a, what is it? It's got 24 liters cylinder, so we should have about 12 liters of water sitting in that. If you have a look at my video on Boyle's Law. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed that and I hope it helps.